Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And even on the weekend, the epic Apple Google, frankly epic, just won't stop coming. So on your screen before you, you see the Epic Games logo, as I'm sure you're used to seeing at this point in time. And also most pertinent to our conversation today, the Unreal Engine logo. Now, if you aren't familiar with anything that is happening in this story, we've got a very long and growing longer playlist for you to check out in Epic versus Everyone, the Fortnite antitrust lawsuits. And to cut a very long story short, what is happening right now is that Epic has put forth a new payment process in their Fortnite application. It drew the ire of both Apple and Google who kicked Fortnite off their stores and then Epic sued both Apple and Google at which point Apple said, get out of here, we're gonna cut off your developer license and along with cutting off that developer license, we are going to limit your access to our software development kits, our APIs, all the engineering support that we otherwise give those folks that wanna help develop things for the iOS ecosystem and that's going to put you in trouble with things like your Unreal Engine business. And so one of the things that has happened across the internet and in my comments is that a lot of people have said that's not fair, that Epic's Fortnite violated the rules, but not Epic's Unreal Engine business line. And what I said to them is that Apple has the right to determine who it does business with. And the fact that one of Epic's products broke the rules and Epic is the party that broke those rules through that product doesn't mean that all of Epic's other products are somehow safe from Apple saying, you know what, we don't trust you anymore. You did this hot fix and we think that was surreptitious and you didn't tell us what your application was going to do. And so we are going to use the rights afforded to us in our developer license to cut you off. And yes, is that a leverage play from Apple? Absolutely. 100% it is. And you don't have to like it. Apple has a lot of bad terms in their documents that I don't like. Apple is a bad actor in a lot of ways and is now trying to leverage back against Epic in the same way that Epic tried to leverage it in the first instance. But the question philosophically and legally becomes, do they have the right to determine who they enter into business relationships with? And obviously, if you're in virtual legality, if you've watched this series, you know where I fall on this, which is that, of course... Even a company the size of Apple gets to determine who it does business with, because if we pretend for a moment that Epic wasn't just trying to put in a direct payment option, but was instead you know, violating international law, performing gambling operations or other illicit activities through the hot fix method that they used to put this Fortnite process in their product, I think we would all agree that Apple has the right to kick them to the curb and the fact that their other product didn't have a black market sales ring of some kind, doesn't get the developer out of that question, Apple should be allowed to say, whoa, 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 we don't want that on our service. Get out of here. The only question becomes then that Epic is having a money fight. And so it makes both sides look a little petty, gets them both rolling around in the mud and different folks on the internet pick their sides themselves, including folks like Phil Spencer and the Xbox project over at Microsoft, who said today in a tweet, today we filed a statement in support of Epic's request to keep access to the Apple software development kit for its Unreal Engine. Ensuring that Epic has access to the latest Apple technology is the right thing for gamer developers and gamers, probably game developers, but gamer developers too. I'm sure they play games from time to time. Now, what's interesting about that statement is it's trying to slice the onion fairly thinly. They are saying they filed the statement in support of Epic's request to keep access to their Apple SDKs, but that is not, in fact, what is the current legal situation that they have filed, Microsoft has filed, in support of, right? So you have this statement here. It's a declaration of Kevin Gamel in further support of plaintiff Epic Games Inc.'s motion for a temporary restraining order. So in order to know exactly what Microsoft just filed this document in support of, we actually have to go look at Epic's lawsuit at their request for this temporary restraining order and see what it is that they propose to ask. Now, if you've watched this series, you know this already, but Epic didn't just say, Apple, you have to give us your SDK. You have to give us the engineering support you give everybody else. Their actual motion for a restraining order is to enjoin Apple from kicking Fortnite off the store, despite the fact that Fortnite, as currently modified, has direct payment obligations in admitted breach of Apple's contract, admitted in Tim Sweeney emails, admitted really by Epic in their lawsuit. And now they are asking for the court to enjoin Apple from enforcing its pretty black and white contract terms. In addition to paragraph three here, which says 
we want the court to enjoin Apple from taking any adverse action against Epic whatsoever, including but not limited to restricting, suspending, or terminating any Epic entity from Apple's developer program on the basis that Epic enabled that in-app payment methodology in Fortnite. So this is the paragraph that Microsoft seems to be aimed at. This is what they want to be in support of. Forget paragraphs one and two. They don't want to get into the Fortnite fight. One of the things we will see in their statement is they don't talk about monopolies. They don't talk about rates. They don't talk about percentages, frankly, because Microsoft is in no position to argue against a 30% cut because that's what Xbox Live takes. That's what PlayStation takes. That's what Nintendo takes. That's what Steam takes, as we have said in the past in this series. But they want to make sure that they come out in support of Apple having to continue to grant access to their software development kit to Epic on this particular question. Now, before we look at Microsoft's statement, it's worth noting that these kinds of statements are not unusual. As a matter of fact, if you go and you look at Epic's request for a temporary restraining order, and we didn't cover this prior in this series, you get all of these statements. These are essentially declarations. You might hear them referred to as affidavits that say things about the background that experts in these various companies would know. So you've got Tim Sweeney as the CEO saying, hey, Fortnite is great. Here's what Apple did. I can back up that these emails were sent. Unreal is great. We've won a lot of awards. A lot of people use it. Unreal Engine is uniquely valuable to developers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they filed these documents in support of the request for a temporary restraining order, which as we talked about in prior videos in the series, is an equitable kind of principle. You actually have to go and ask for special treatment from the court and say, hey, we can't wait for this entire court judgment to be given because we will otherwise be irreparably harmed by the actions that our opposition is intending to take. And so court, we would ask you to stop them from doing it. Now, let's take a look at Microsoft's statement here. I, Kevin Gamble, declare as follows. I'm the general manager, gaming developer experiences for Microsoft. In this role, I oversee Microsoft's support of game creators, including game developers, audio engineers, level designers, game producers, etc., within the Xbox ecosystem. Among other things, my team helps game creators achieve their creative goals. I have been an engineer for more than 30 years, including more than 20 years at Microsoft, and have more than 10 years of experience supporting game creators across multiple platforms. So the first thing you say in one of these documents is, why should you listen to me, Court? What is my experience level on this question? And Mr. Gamel here sounds like he has an excellent amount of experience to talk about the things that he's about to talk about. Epic Games' Unreal Engine is critical technology for numerous game creators, including Microsoft. Game engines provide creators with a development environment that delivers the necessary graphics, rendering, physics, sound, networking, and other technologies that enable them to build games that run on multiple platforms. One of the really interesting things, not just in video games, but in software in general, is how much kind of background information you have to give the court on exactly how these things operate. That's a very good paragraph. Subsection A is great. It is something that I think we in virtual legality and probably people that play video games in general can kind of know off the back of their hand what a game engine does, but it's important definitional context, especially for the court that maybe doesn't have that experience level thinking about software and especially game engines in this fashion. Although some large game creators choose to develop their own proprietary game engines, many others, including small and independent game creators, utilize game engines built by and licensed from third parties. So you want to frame it as... Yes, we are Microsoft talking. Maybe the court is disinclined to listen to Microsoft, but you should know, court, that this isn't a Microsoft-facing issue. This is an issue for small and independent creators, which the court might look more favorably upon, rightly or wrongly, depending on your position on these kinds of questions. The law probably shouldn't care. And yet, when you're talking about equitable principles, when you're talking about an injunction, it's nice to say, hey, mom and pop stores or game developers, in this case, will be harmed by this as well. Many of these creators do not have the resources or capabilities to build their own game engines and rely on the availability of third-party game engines, while other creators may choose to use third-party game engines to save development costs and utilize already developed technologies. As a result, Epic's Unreal Engine is one of the most popular third-party game engines available to game creators. And in Microsoft's view, there are very few other options available for creators to license with as many features and as much functionality as Unreal Engine across multiple platforms, including iOS. Interesting here that the actual leader in licensed engine technology, Unity, is not 
described herein. It's very important that Microsoft make the case that Unreal Engine is fundamental to the needs of the world because that's what Epic is trying to put forth for the court. But there's at least a little bit of disingenuousness here that you see framed by the lawyers in this statement as we don't want to say that it's the only licensing available option for people. We don't want to say that people don't otherwise license Unity Engine. We want to say this is the only one with all of these features and functionality because nobody can accuse us of lying and this affidavit will hold up in court. Microsoft has an enterprise-wide, multi-year Unreal Engine license agreement and has invested significant resources and engineer time working with and customizing Unreal Engine for its own games on PC, Xbox consoles, and mobile devices, including iOS devices. So they have skin in the game here. Microsoft is saying, hey, look, we have made games with Unreal that work on iOS, and we personally, as Microsoft, forgetting the mom-and-pop game developers for a second, are concerned about this particular action. As they say in Romanet I, a little unusual since there isn't an II, for example, Microsoft's racing game Forza Street is currently available on iOS and utilizes Unreal Engine. It's interesting that they only have the one example. I'd be curious if they didn't have more examples of that and you could frame it against exactly what Microsoft has available in the iOS in general because it's it's only one example. It's not terribly demonstrative of the case they're trying to make here. Denying Epic access to Apple's SDK and other development tools will prevent Epic from supporting Unreal Engine on iOS and macOS and will place Unreal Engine and those game creators that have built, are building, and may build games on it at a substantial disadvantage. Developing a game using different game engines for different platforms may be prohibitively expensive and difficult. This is a case for game engines in general, not Unreal Engine, but fair enough. As a result, game creators, including Microsoft, that are preparing to develop a game targeted at multiple platforms, generally choose game engines based both on the functionality they provide, as well as their ability to support development for those platforms. If Unreal Engine cannot support games for iOS or Mac OS, Microsoft would be required to choose between abandoning its customers and potential customers on the iOS and Mac OS platforms, or choosing a different game engine when preparing to develop new games. Because iOS is a large and growing market for games, Apple's discontinuation of Unreal Engine's ability to support iOS will be a material disadvantage for the Unreal Engine in future decisions by Microsoft and other game creators as to the choice of an engine for new games. Even uncertainty about Unreal Engine's ability to continue supporting iOS and macOS will make it less likely for Microsoft and, I believe, other game creators, that's not an actually attested to statement, it's just a belief, to select Unreal Engine for their product. When game creators are planning development projects, which can last for years, it is important to have confidence that the chosen engine will continue to be available on and support all platforms on which the game creators plan to distribute their games. There are no lies here. This is an accurate statement of what is happening. This is a statement that makes sense. Microsoft would prefer it if Unreal Engine uncertainty didn't exist. The counterpoint to all of this is that this is what Epic should have been considering before they blatantly breached their agreement with Apple. And you don't have to agree with Apple's terms. You can sit here in the comments to my videos and tell me, Rick, Apple's terms are terrible and someone needs to fight against them. And I say, yeah, absolutely. If you want to fight against Apple's terms, you can absolutely do that. Microsoft has done that, as we will see at the end of this video. But one of the really important things here to note is that Epic breached its agreement with Apple. Epic really doesn't even fight against that point. And now Apple says, we don't want to work with you any longer. This is the impact of that decision. And these are the kinds of things that Epic should have thought about. Also, in terms of some of these paragraphs, hey, we want to be able to put games on iOS. iOS has these big audiences. iOS makes money from these games being available. Games will have a harder time being out there without Unreal Engine. These are all things that speak to market considerations for Apple and not necessarily considerations that the judge should be interposing their own philosophy or belief system on, right? That if iOS thinks it's important enough to separate from this other actor to actually terminate their document, to terminate their agreement as developers for the iOS ecosystem, then Apple is in and of itself saying, hey, we are okay getting rid of their access to Unreal Engine and perhaps our access to the funds that come out of those games that would otherwise use Unreal Engine. Apple is in the business of getting people to make games and put them on the iOS ecosystem. This, to me, speaks to the importance of the issue from Apple's side of things. And it's very difficult to see exactly how you separate this argument that, court, you should enjoin Apple from enforcing a termination clause that they have because Unreal Engine is important from anyone else being asking of the court to not allow the other party to terminate their agreement because whatever it is that they are doing is important. And we'll see that as well in a second. 
Apple's discontinuation of Epic's ability to develop and support Unreal Engine will harm game creators and gamers. For game creators in the later stages of development, utilizing Unreal Engine and targeting iOS, Unreal Engine's sudden loss of support would create significant costs and difficult decisions. The creator would have significant sunk costs and lost time using Unreal Engine for game creation and would have to choose between starting development all over, abandoning the iOS ecosystem, or ceasing development entirely. Apple's removal of Unreal Engine's ability to develop updates and improvements for iOS could also harm already launched iOS games built on Unreal Engine if the game engine can no longer develop updates that take advantage of new features, fix software bugs, patch security flaws, etc. This will harm games that have already launched on iOS and in turn harm gamers. In addition, this situation could bifurcate a game's player base such that gamers on iOS cannot play or communicate with friends or family who are playing on other platforms, which is an echo if you remember from Epic's request for the temporary restraining order of the reason behind their ask that Apple be forced to include Fortnite on their iOS, regardless of the changes that Epic made to that application. That sentence strikes me as something that was specifically added by Epic Council. And make no mistake, this is the kind of thing that Epic Council would be absolutely intimately familiar with and go and get from folks like Microsoft out in the world. So the fundamental problem with all of this, there's nothing wrong. There's no lies here. Microsoft isn't committing perjury. Kevin Gamble has the experience. He says he has. This all makes sense. Is the reasoning behind Microsoft making this step, right? Microsoft didn't have to stick their nose in at all. And fundamentally, as a philosophical level, there is a problem with what Microsoft is actually asking Apple to do. And you don't actually have to like Apple for any of this to apply. If you would prefer to not think of this as Apple, think of it as your favorite company that enters into contract terms to protect itself, that enters into contract terms that allow it to decide who it does business with, who it shares money with, who it shares marketing with, and ask yourself whether Apple out there in the world should have to continue to do business with a company that is selling hats and having storefront items about how bad Apple Apple is and everything else. Or as Apple says in their opposition statement, which we read on Friday of this last week, to participate in the App Store and developer program, app developers are bound by guidelines and agree that Apple may terminate their access to the App Store if they fail to live up to their promises. In the very first section of the guidelines, Apple clearly informs developers wishing to sell their apps through the App Store that if you attempt to cheat the system, For example, by trying to trick the review process, steal user data, copy another developer's work, manipulate ratings or app store discovery, your apps will be removed from the store and you will be expelled from the developer program. Apple has invested in an extensive array of tools, software, and Apple support services available to app developers. For example, Apple now makes 150,000 APIs available to all developers. This is an exponential increase over the number of APIs available to developers in the beginning. And as a condition of using these tools, Apple requires developers to sign the license agreement. This agreement prohibits developers like Epic from using Apple's software to disable, hack, or otherwise interfere with security or any other Apple software or technology or enable others to do so, and prohibits developers from distributing applications to Apple's products that have circumvented its review process. It forbids developers like Epic from making changes to Fortnite without again submitting the revised app for review to ensure they have not made changes to the payment system provided a store or storefront for other code or applications or bypass security features of the iOS or privacy protections. And it expressly says that violations will result in termination of all rights and licenses granted by Apple hereunder. Further, when you are considering whether Epic should be granted this kind of special power of the court to prevent Apple from acting on these things, Apple makes a very good point. They say similarly, If the parties have contemplated termination in their agreements, then irreparable injury cannot result from that termination. That is because any harm results from the express terms of the contract, and no irreparable injury from exercise of contract provisions holds in the precedents that they cite. Epic does not contest that it made its promises. The contract language of the developer's license is crystal clear. In prohibiting Epic from downloading and distributing without Apple approval functionality such as an unauthorized payment system. Epic acknowledges that it violates these agreements. They put screenshots of the violations. And so Apple should be permitted to terminate that connection. Or as Epic helpfully put in their own request for the temporary restraining order, here's section 11.2 of that license agreement. This agreement and all rights and licenses granted by Apple hereunder 
all rights and licenses and any services provided here under will terminate effective immediately upon notice from Apple that you have committed a breach and failed to cure that breach within 30 days or immediately if you engage or encourage others to engage in any misleading, fraudulent, improper, unlawful, or dishonest, dishonest act. Furthermore, and perhaps most importantly for this entire argument, both Apple and Epic reserve the right to terminate the agreement for convenience, meaning, look, we are in the business of mutual benefit, and if one or the other party determines that this relationship is no longer beneficial, we have the right to terminate our relationship with you. There is no requirement that any business continue to work with someone else, especially if that someone else deliberately breaches their agreement, hides the fact that they did so until they call for a server check, and then immediately launches into a disparagement campaign upon filing a federal lawsuit against me. Look, I don't like to work with folks that file federal lawsuits against me, nor do I like to work with folks that immediately launch into disparagement marketing campaigns. And I have the right under my agreement to terminate for convenience for any reason or no reason. And so I don't have to give a reason. But if you ask me, I could say, hey, I don't want to work with you anymore. Apple has said in their lawsuit, in their response to the temporary restraining order request, that they don't want Epic to go away. If Epic took their Fortnite stuff out, if they stopped all of this madness, they could come back to the store and they could continue their lawsuit. If Epic wants to claim that Apple is a monopolist and that they have monopoly prices and terms in their contract, Apple is happy to litigate that issue, but they aren't happy to have a piece of software that violates their terms and conditions that was never agreed to as something that they would allow on their store, simply put up there and supported by their engineering resources. And again, you might hate Apple, Certainly a number of comments to my videos suggest that you do, or at least some of you do hate Apple. That's fine. Pretend this is someone else. Pretend it's, I don't know, say Xbox. I've pulled up on your screen right now a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission that Microsoft has filed in respect of a publisher agreement that they entered into with Take-Two. There's not anything specific that I want to talk to you about with respect to the contract itself. What I want to talk to you about is that this is a publisher agreement under which Take-Two gets access to the Microsoft Xbox One ecosystem and that Microsoft protects itself using. Microsoft may disable or remove any digital content from Xbox Live or on Xbox One consoles, including by disabling previously downloaded copies on end users Xbox One consoles, immediately and at any time following consultation with publishers, sales territory wide, or in specific countries, if Microsoft determines that publisher has breached this agreement. If publisher does something against the terms that they entered into with Microsoft, Microsoft can cut off all the digital content and including disabling previously downloaded copies of that content, depending on what the publisher does. Even more to the point, Either party may terminate this agreement in its entirety or solely for an applicable software title effective immediately on notice if the other party materially breaches this agreement. And what is the effect of that? On termination or expiration of this agreement, publisher has no further right to and will not exercise rights licensed under this agreement or an XDK license, an Xbox developer kit license. The very same kind of developer kits that Microsoft is talking about on its own right? When we look at this issue, when Microsoft says we have filed a statement in support of Epic's request to keep access to the Apple SDK for its Unreal Engine, it is irrespective of whether Epic has breached its agreements with Apple. And yeah, I think that is cutting off your nose despite your face. If you are in Microsoft's shoes, it is seeing not the forest, but simply the trees because Microsoft is in the business of entering into agreements like this one. He's entering into agreements that say, hey, if you breach this, we can cut off your access to our Xbox development license. And it is very difficult to see exactly how the Microsoft argument would be changed if somebody came after them and said, yeah, we breached, but your access to the XDK, it's too important. I put in too much time and resources and engineering to make sure that I can put something on Xbox One. You can't take it away because, hey, yeah, I breached, but this is too important to me as a small developer. That doesn't make any sense, which might lead you to ask the question, why would Microsoft do this? Right? And in the very first video to this particular series, Epic declares war. I noted when Epic put these items in the Fortnite application on both Google Play and the App Store, before any of this happened, before lawsuits were filed, 
that they were entering into a discussion that was going on across technology, particularly with Apple, and that Microsoft was a strong part of. This actually might have fomented Epic's desire to enter into this in the first place. And I pulled up an article from The Verge that says, Apple confirms cloud gaming services like xCloud and Stadia violate App Store guidelines. Apple actually went out and said, the App Store was created to be safe. Our customers enjoy great apps. But in addition to App Store, developers can choose to reach all iPhone and iPad users through Safari if they would rather do that. We have to otherwise check every single game that you would make available through xCloud in a way that we don't check the movies that are available on Netflix. I think Microsoft has a pretty good point there. Interactivity is different from movies. There are things that could be considered on those kinds of questions, but that Microsoft saying, hey, Apple, you're treating us differently. You shouldn't treat us differently. Microsoft goes out and says, hey, this is bullshit, Apple. Our testing period for the Project xCloud preview app for iOS has expired. Unfortunately, we do not have a path to bring our vision of cloud gaming with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate to gamers on iOS. Apple stands alone as the only general purpose platform to to deny consumers from cloud gaming and game subscription services like Xbox Game Pass. And it consistently treats gaming apps differently, applying more lenient rules to non-gaming apps, even when they include interactive content. Microsoft went out there with a press statement and said, you should be against Apple for this reason. Bring the court of public opinion into it, but not in a way that is like free Fortnite and have tournaments and put things in Sea of Thieves. Instead, have this fight and say, Apple is preventing you from getting this product that we think you would like, that we don't think causes any harm to you. And you should ask Apple to do that or consider buying into a different ecosystem and moving the needle that way. In this context, with this happening and in a similar fight happening with respect to Apple and Facebook gaming, so don't be surprised if Facebook winds up having an affidavit that they issue in support of Epic on this question, I think that Epic moved forward and Microsoft looked at what they could do to not get fully involved, but get a little bit involved and came up with the solution of putting together a statement like this one, broadly in support of their temporary restraining order including some crazy stuff that Microsoft probably isn't in support of, just allowing Fortnite to be in breach and put up on the store regardless. But at least paragraph three, acting in support of, putting forward this statement saying Unreal Engine is very important and to hell or high water with the consequences. That yeah, we want to put some pressure on Apple because we are Microsoft and we think after looking at all of this, we don't have to pay for a lawsuit. We don't have to pay for Cravath. We don't have to take on all the heat that Tim Sweeney and Epic is taking on. We can put this extra pressure on Apple Apple. And you know what? So what if a temporary restraining order issues on these grounds and the actual philosophical legal underpinnings are a breach of contract is fine if we can say that it hurts too many third party beneficiaries. And I don't think Microsoft actually wants that position, but that's the one they have staked out. And that's why I did a video on this all today, because I think it's a bad position to take. I think it's a silly position for Phil Spencer and Xbox to advertise that they are taking. And I put that a little bit more succinctly in a tweet earlier today in which I said, it is good to know that Xbox's official position is that contract breach is okay if the termination resulting therefrom could conceivably harm too many third parties. Hard to see how that could ever be used against it. Smart strategy. And that's been Virtual Legality for today. I am positive this will not be our last visit into epic crazy town. So if you enjoy this series, please do like, subscribe, share it with other folks that might be interested in these topics. This is going to be a long running series if I have any correctness in my guesses at all. And we do cover other things besides epic in this space as well. So if you're interested in things about business and law through the prism of pop culture, movies, television, video games, and all the other stuff that you like to read about and know about, please do check us out and tell other folks that we're here. If you saw this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.